Yes, Evan syndrome is just a name uh, that uh, stuck with a bunch of patients that were described by Dr. Evans way back in 1951. So the definition of Evans syndrome is patients with autoimmune hemolytic anemia and autoimmune thrombocytopenia. That means patients have anemia and ITP or low platelets and low hemoglobin. And all these patients were put together by Dr. Evans in 1951, and he looked at their mechanism closely. And remember, in 1951, there was no, nobody even knew the structure of DNA. That came much later. And Dr. Evans, uh, kind of uh, looking at a one father and daughter pair that he had in his series of patients, uh, he kind of commented about... Uh, uh, this being inherited in some way. And I remember at, in 1951, when they saw anemia or hemolytic anemia, everybody thought of only thalassemia or sickle cell anemia because that was those were the ones hemoglobinopathies were known. But autoimmune hemolytic anemia was first described by Dr. Evans and his contemporaries in nine, a very early 1950s. So then as we progressed with various disorders, including ALPS and PI3 kinase and other disorders of genetic the effect due to CTLF4 or STAT3 gain of function that we have described from NIH in the last few years. We call them, they come out of this collection of patients called Evans syndrome because they all present with multi-lineage cytopenias. And uh, that, so the treatment of Evans syndrome, again, depends on the genetic background of the patient. So every patient with Ev Evans syndrome should get a genetic evaluation done rather than forgetting about the patient just because we gave them a name. This is what frustrates me most, and uh, the, uh, especially our colleagues all over the world, including those from France in particular, uh, published very uh, interesting papers most recently where about 30% of these patients, uh, you can find a genetic explanation for their autoimmune hemolytic anemia and autoimmune thrombocytopenia. Then you can treat them for that particular genetic defect, whether it is PI3 kinase or CTLF4 or uh, fast defect in ALPS or uh, your a STAT3 gain of function. So it is very important to put it all together. And that is what happened recently when I was asked to review a paper talking about Evans syndrome. And I had to write this commentary on Evans syndrome in blood this year. And uh, that really is, it's very important for every hematologist in the world not to stop at Evans syndrome, think beyond into the genetic background of these patients. Yes, today we have made a diagnosis so we can make a diagnosis of 30% of these patients by whatever means are available. But I have a feeling going forward for any chronic disease, we will be able to find some kind of genetic epigenetic explanation for their defect and we will be able to better target them rather than treating them empirically with high dose steroids, IVIG or uh, your uh, rapamycin, whatever we are treating these patients, it is all empirical right now. It's not targeted. And I think we need to move from there to the next level.